In this video, we're going to look at how to use automation with our Avid 11 Rack. Now, once you know these concepts, you will be able to automate, say, a wall position, say, your distortion on off, or any of the parameters of the distortion, or any of the effects and amps in the Avid 11 Rack. Now, this is a pretty deep subject, but we're going to cover all of the basic concepts. And once you know these concepts, you will be able to automate pretty much anything you want in the Avid 11 Rack. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, guys, so here we are in Pro Tools. Now, first, I just want to take you through how I have everything set up. Then I'm just going to do the process very quickly of using this MIDI track and sending some data out and changing our wah pedal. And then I'm going to show you how we could do it live. I'm going to explain why I have it set up this way. All right. And I also want to mention that, you know, if I see, you see, if I click away here, our 11 rack editor stays open. That's because I'm using a program called Always On Top. I've discussed that in a, in a different tutorial. And for those unaware, this 11 rack editor here, this is simply a, a graphical display of our 11 rack. This is not a plugin. This controls the physical hardware. Okay. So I'm, you know, if you're 11 rack user, you know that, but if you're new, you uh, do not. I've been asked several times how to, you know, how do I get the 11 rack plugin? There is no 11 rack plugin. There is a 11 plugin, but that's completely, you know, completely different. 11 MK2. So let's just go through how I have this set up. So I have a dry guitar track that I've already recorded dry guitar from. Let me go ahead and switch this to main out and you'll hear that. So just, you know, just simple power chords there. Okay. And the way I'm, I'm going to set this up for the majority of this tutorial is I'm going to be using the reamp input of the 11 rack. Again, we can switch this from the front panel of the 11 rack, but we'll just use the editor. It's just easier. So that's on reamp. And I already have a tutorial about reamping if you don't know how, uh, how to do that. So now when I play, I'm just going to have this aux track for right now. Okay, so basically what's happening is, of course, this signal is being sent through the actual 11 rack and then coming back in this channel here because the input is 11 rig left, right. Okay, I'm not going to explain reamping again. We have another tutorial on that. Okay, so the first thing I want to mention is we're going to be using this stereo track, with which the input is 11 rig left, right, and we're going to be using the reamp. So this dry signal is getting sent out through the 11 rack and then going to be coming back in. We'll just monitor, say, this track. Okay, I just wanted to show that you could use an aux track for this as well, and the aux track is always on, so you wouldn't have to arm it or anything. The only thing is you won't be able to record on your aux track. I just want to, you know, I have another video showing how to use an aux track with the 11 rack. It's kind of cool because the monitor is always open. I just wanted to mention you could use an aux track. So that way, if, if you're mixing, if you're certain you're not going to want uh, you know, the dirty sound, you're not going to want to record it. You could use an aux track, although I would suggest you go ahead and record the dirty sound, even if you're going to mix later on. Okay. So let's go ahead and delete this aux track. Now that we've explained that we could use an aux track, if you want to, we'll just get rid of it. Now, let me go ahead and do this, uh, real quick here. And we'll just, uh, we'll do the automate the wah pedal first. And then, uh, yeah, I'll go back and, and, uh, I'll show you and we'll do it for reels. Okay but I'll just do it real quick here, just so you can see it happening. All right, go ahead and hit play. You can see that right there. You can see it's automating. Now, of course we can't hear anything because we got rid of our uh, aux track, so I'll just put the input there and you can hear it. Okay, pretty cool. And I think I'm noodling down here somewhere. Of course there's no automation, so I'll just draw some in. All right, so that's basically it. Pretty cool. Now we're going to, we're going to you know dig into this uh, quite a bit more, but I want to show you what not to do. Now we can do this live, by the way. You know, not using the reamp. We can use the guitar in, and we can record directly to an audio track, and we could put automation in to have this automation happen live. But what I want to show you. Make sure there's no automation there. Okay. Now I'm going to grab a guitar here. Let me, let me set this up first to 11, to 11 rig in, because this is a very important concept to grasp. Now, also I want to mention, we're using a stereo track here just because my voice is going to be going down the middle lane and I want the guitars to be left and right. Okay. Now, if I was doing dirty guitars for reels, 
I would probably be using two mono tracks because things can get messy if you start double tracking, triple tracking, and you're using stereo, you know, st stereo guitar tracks with, with dirty sounds. I'm not saying never do it. I'm just saying, you know, most of the time I'd probably use uh, mono tracks, you know, I'd use mono tracks. All right, mono tracks. But we're going to use stereo just, just for the video's sake, okay? I just wanted to explain that. So I'm going to grab a guitar. Let me mute this. This is on guitar input. I'm going to go grab a guitar here real quick. All right, so we can monitor. Actually, I'll just record. Record, enable that, and turn it up. Pretty cool. Now, just as a little side note, if any of you download any of my rigs, just know I always set the gain higher than you really need. Uh, I just like, you know, rigs to have more gain uh, whenever you're going through them real quickly because uh, it, you, it's easier to play, uh, actually. But whenever you're double tracking, triple tracking, you might want to adjust that gain. You know, so let's, let's actually pull this down a bit. Just a bit. Okay, let's try that. We could even turn this off. The reason I use the green distortion is because it helps with the boominess on the low end. It really tightens things up and it gives you a, a you know more attack on the top end. You could really turn it down to here or so, uh, you know, for this amp. Especially if you're going to double track. It really depends on the sound you want, of course. A little bit too low. Somewhere around there is pretty good. Okay, and we'll turn this back on. All right, so let's go ahead and record this. I want to show you what not to do and how this will not work, okay? So we don't have any any automation going through our wall or any of these effects, okay? So I'll just go ahead and record our count off there. All right, that's cool. That's all we need. Go ahead and stop. Go ahead and take this off of record enable. Let me take my guitar off. Okay, so let me just squeeze this down a bit. And we have loop record on, by the way, there. And I can just click this track and that will automatic, automatically set my loop points there. Okay, so let's play it. All right, cool. So say we like that, but now we want to automate our wall. Well, this will not work. And I'll show you, and then I'll tell you why. So. Let's go ahead and open our automation lane. This is the right number, which we're going, where I'm going to explain all of this in just a minute, okay? Make sure this output is 11 rack. General one, again, we're going to, going to explain this later. Now I'll just set this up. Now you're going to see the wall move here, okay? So I'll go ahead and hit play. So the wall's moving, but we're not hearing any effect. Why is that? Why if I were to say monitor this track now, so if I monitor it, we're not going to be hearing this. Unmute this and switch this to reamp. Now watch. Now we can hear the effect. That's because this track here, right here, pull that back out. This track here is being sent through the 11 rack. Okay, mute that, make sure. Actually, it wouldn't matter now because we're not sending anything through it, but I'll just put it on guitar just so you can see that. Okay, take that off the monitor. And now if I play. We're not hearing anything because this track here is is now a track on our hard drive. It's an actual physical recording on our hard drive. So it's not being sent through the 11 rack. The reason I'm mentioning this is if you happen to record your performance without recording your dry part, and then you want to add automation through the 11 rack later, you can't do that. It's not going to work without sending something through the 11 rack. This track right here, right here is not going through the 11 rack. It's, it's just being played from our hard drive. So I just wanted to make sure that is completely clear. Does that make sense? Now, if you wanted to do automation, I'll just get that out of the way. Then you would have to use like a plugin on that. And we can do that. Now it doesn't make much sense to add a wall onto a dirty guitar, but you can do that. Uh, we have these walls available. Now, since this is a uh, stereo channel, I have to use multi, uh, multi mono. So Avid and it is the black shiny wall. We'll even put it on the black wall. And for automation, we'll just do position. Add that over here. Okay. Pull our drop down. Make sure we choose position. 
and I'll just grab our tool and we'll draw it in. Now, if I hit play, then it works because again, nothing is being sent through the 11 rack. So it's being sent through this plugin now. All right, so hopefully, you know, I just wanted to explain that. Okay, so does that make sense to everyone? If it doesn't, just, you know, leave me a comment and I'll try to explain it better. But I think it makes sense that this track right here is an audio track. Now, it's not being sent through our 11 rack. So adding automation after the fact will do absolutely nothing. Okay, in that case, you'd have to use, you know, our, uh, our uh, plugin version, which of course sounds way different if you're going to affect an audio track after it's been recorded versus coming through the dry guitar. Now, one thing you could do if you have your dry track and you didn't want to say reamp it, uh, you could go to plugin and use use something like the 11 MK2 uh, for your amp effects. Of course, you'd put your drop your wall, you know, on top of that. Of course, and you could do it that way and do automation like this. Okay, so hopefully all that makes sense. We're going to get rid of that. Don't need this automation lane. Let's go ahead and get rid of this automation. Okay, so I think we've explained everything. Uh, remember, I've showed you how we could have done this. We could do it live, by the way. If you set up your automation lane right here, which in this case for for uh, the wah, it's number four, is the CC number that we need. We could set this up beforehand, okay? And then come in here, make sure this is on guitar, of course, and that we have our input set to... 11 rig left right wouldn't need that and then we were to record then that automation would of course be recorded in this performance but make sure you record your dry guitar too in case you know your automation is wrong and you want to change it later on in the mix down using automation like this and like i'm going to show you here in just a second uh, you could literally uh, use this for say a, a live use you could section out all your songs with all of the automation that you need you could even put in program changes now i'm not i'm not going to talk about program changes and program changes would be how we can change the act, the rig that we're on. Okay, so that would be a program change. Then you could just add that in here, add in your program changes. You can see if I, and add in your program changes. And as you can see, Pro Tools will switch your rigs for you, which is pretty cool. I have this covered in a different video. Now you can use this technique, the program changes, along with the automation technique I'm going to show you in just a minute. So you can really automate an entire song, you know, entire gigs worth of songs really to play live or to record live, you know, and have everything switch automatically. So you're not having to use a foot pedal uh, or whatever. You can have all this program, your, your uh, program changes, you know, as, as you can see, the patches are changing there along with the automation. We can do both all at the same time. Pretty cool. Okay, so now let's go ahead and dig in. I'm going to show you how to do this step by step. We're gonna do it for real. Okay, so now I'm going to show you exactly how this is done. Let's go ahead and get rid of this MIDI track just because I want to you know, start from the beginning. We'll get rid of this recorded track. So we, we still have our audio here, which you're not going to hear because I have to change the output to main. So this is our dry guitar that we still have. Okay, now I explained previously there why I'm doing it this way, just so I don't have to keep playing live. But again, you can do it live, not a problem. Okay, so you know the way I'm going to set this up. Don't think you have to do the reamp way. Although this is a great way, uh, you know, if you're going to be mixing the guitar later, this is a great way to, to do it uh, using the reamp, or of course just using plugins, you know, like 11 MK2 bias, whatever you know guitar amp you'd like to use. Okay, let me go ahead and change this rig back to the one we had. And be sure to uh, check out the, that program change video. It's pretty interesting what you can do. Let's go ahead and set this up how I had it before. Don't need so much gain on this guy here. Again, I do that with a lot of my rigs. I set them up uh, you know, with a little more gain than, than you really need. Okay, so we have that set up. Now, let's go ahead. Let me move this for a second. Go ahead and I'm on Windows, so Control Shift N is my shortcut. Uh, keyboard shortcut there, and we'll do a MIDI track. You want a MIDI track? Now we could do multiple MIDI tracks, but we're going to use one MIDI track and just use multiple lanes, okay? So we'll go ahead and create that. So you need your MIDI track. Let's pull this up here just so it makes a little more sense to us. We'll even expand it out a little bit. So this is the wet guitar is uh, what's coming through our 11 rack. Pull this back over here. 
So it's the dry guitar is going to be going through. Let me set this back up to reamp. It's going to be going through our 11 rack. You can see the input here is reamp. And it's going to be monitoring it from this track. We'll record it later, but most of the time we're just going to uh, be monitoring. Again, you could use an aux track for that as well. All right, so let's go ahead and set this up step by step. And we're going to use the wah first, but keep in mind these concepts, everything you learn here will apply to all of these effects. All you need to know is the MIDI CC number. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up and then I'll show you how we can find those MIDI CC numbers. This is actually very easy. I know this video is long already, but I just want to make sure everything is you know concrete in your mind, okay? So let's go ahead and go through this. Once you learn how to do it, you can set this up in a minute, maybe. So here's our MIDI track, okay? We, are, we already have our guitar set up. I already explained how we have our guitar set up. So now we have to set up our MIDI track because we have to send data from Pro Tools to our physical 11 rack hardware to make these changes, okay? Uh, as you saw, we could do it with a plugin just by using an automation lane right here on the track, but we don't have any plugins because again, the 11 rack is not a plugin. So we'll, we'll need to use a MIDI track. We don't need any MIDI cables. Now I have this set up. So my playback engine is my 11 rack. My 11 rack is the playback engine, okay? All that's clear. We have our guitar set up. Let's set up our MIDI track to control the wah. Let's do that first because it's really visual and this question was specifically asked of me in uh, one of the comments from my other video. So we have our MIDI track. Here's the input. Now we could leave this on all. We actually don't, we don't need to change anything here. We'll just leave it on all. But what we want to do is make sure this MIDI track is sending data to our 11 rack. So what we want is this drop down, go to 11 rack, and what we want is channel one. If we do channel two, it's not going to work. So channel one. So now Pro Tools will send data from this MIDI track into the 11 rack via the USB cable. Okay, so via that USB cable. Okay, so we have our MIDI track set up, 11 rack, channel one, the output. Now we have to draw in some automation, right? How do we do that? Well, over here to the pencil tool, just select it and you can click and hold. Now we have all of these uh, different tools we can use. Now for something like the wah, triangle would work good. Square probably wouldn't work that great because it's just on, it would just be like you know, on and off messages. Line, that could work. Freehand would work. And uh, let me just do this real quick. So I could use our freehand. I could just draw it in as such. I'm not going to monitor anything. Just look at the uh, playback here and you'll see it. You can see how it starts going up and down slowly there. Okay. That works. We'll just go ahead and grab that and delete it. Now we can use our line tool and make lines as such. All right. And then I hit play there. You can see there it goes. Okay. Come back to our multi tool, get our cursor there, delete it. We could go to square. One thing that, uh, that I need to mention as well is this, uh, this resolution is controlled by the grid here. So if I went to say 30 second notes and I drew in a square, I'd really have to pull out here for you to see this. You can see that's 30 second notes. Now, if I try to change it here into say uh, one bar and I draw it in, you can see that that doesn't affect our automation. Now, if I were to go to notes, then it does. Okay, so I go to 30 second notes there and you can see that. Go to eighth notes, one click and there we go. All right, so just keep in mind, we're doing automation. I'm just double clicking to get rid of these, by the way. All right, so come over here to your drop down, and we can change this to controllers. And I'm actually going to explain this here in just a minute, but this is eighth notes, and you can see how that works. That's just on and off because we use the square. All right, get rid of that. Come back over here. Let's make this quarter notes, and we'll do a square again. Grab our tool there. So you can see this is just going to be on and off. You can see up and down, up and down, up and down. All right, so that doesn't make sense for the position of the wall. Now it might make sense for on or off messages for say a distortion or any of these other effects. Okay. But the triangle is going to work pretty well. You could do random as well if, if you want. I just want to make sure you're aware of the tools. We're going to use triangle. So we'll just pull this out and go to grid and we'll go with eighth notes. Now this depends on where you start. You can see 
Now it's a little bit different if I start from the top versus if I start from the bottom. So just keep that in mind. Hit play. You can see it's going up and down with that nice curve, you know, smoothly up and down. And we could monitor this and make sure the wall is actually on. And hit play. All right, cool. So now we need to know how did I know that it was controllers and number four, CC number four. Well, we're going to check that out. And there's a couple ways you can do that. Let me move this. If you have your 11 rec user's guide, this is one way you can find all of your MIDI control numbers. So just click here and you can see all of these numbers here that are uh, you know, laid out for us, everything that we need to know. And the great thing about having the PDF available is of course you can search. So I already have WAH auto filled in there. I just hit control F to search, uh, to find it next. There we go. So we know the black wall, our bypass is 43 and our position is four. Very easy, okay? And this works with anything. So we can say, I'll just type in green. And so there's the green jersey. We'll just hit next. We can just keep going through here. All of the greens. Easier way would be to click this and then hit next. So there we go. Red, blue, green. This is the controls for our amp. So here's the green JRC overdrive. Bypass is 25. Drive is 27. Tone is 78. Level is 79. So you'll have to make a note of these. Now we're going to look at this on the 11 rack in just a second because we can also see it from there. I just want to make sure you're aware that you can find all of these numbers in the PDF. You know, most people have smartphones with some sort of cloud storage. You know, I use a Windows phone, so I use OneDrive. So of course I have this document in my OneDrive so I can access it from anywhere. So I always know the MIDI CC numbers I need, but we can actually see all of this information from the 11 rack itself, which we're going to take a look at in just a second. So let me just show you real quick, G the green JRC overdrive. We know the bypass is 25. All right, so let's check it out. Let's see what does that mean? Pull this back over. You can see that it's on right now. So here's our MIDI track. And like I said, we could use multiple MIDI tracks. We're just going to use uh, extra lanes here. Okay, so I could actually use this lane right now, but we'll just use another one. Why not? Come down to controllers. And you know, we don't see, what did we want? We wanted, we're, we're going to test the uh, say 25 there, which is bypass. So we don't see 25 here. Very easy to add it. Just add or remove controllers. Let's move this over. And it was 25. So here are MIDI controllers, one through 31. We want number 25 right here. Hit add. You can see we already have the full control four added there. So we have 25. Hit OK. Now after we add that, we can use this drop down, come down to controllers, and right there is 25. Pretty cool. Now this is already on, as you can see. And if I were to, let me not, we don't need to monitor this. If I just hit play, nothing's happening. Okay, that's because it's already on. So let's pull this up to 127. Now, if we hit play, it's still going to stay on. All right, so it's up to 127. We'll just grab our pencil tool and we could use, it doesn't matter, we could use a line or a square. I just want to drag this straight down. And I'll just grab our hand tool to make sure this is all the way down. All right, so now we're at the beginning of the track here. I'll hit play. It's on, it's on, and it's off. And let me do that one more time because my cursor was over there. I don't want anybody to think that I actually, actually clicked that. I'll even turn it off. So I'll hit play and it will immediately come on because 127 is on and zero here is off. And you can see the numbers if I click, you see that's off, you see over here in the corner it says zero. If I click here, it's 127. Now actually the actual number isn't that low. I think it's below 63 or something. I'll see here. Yeah, so that works. Uh, that works too. All right, so that works, but I just go all the way down. So again, it's off. As soon as I hit play, it'll turn on. Once it gets to bar two, it'll turn off. So it's on, turned on, turned off. We could turn it on again right here. On, off, on. Pretty cool. So now let's head over to the 11 rack so I can show you how we can find all of these numbers on the Avid 11 rack. All right, so here we are in front of the actual 11 rack unit. So if you don't have access to that PDF, or you don't have your uh, manual with you because all of these numbers are in the manual as well. We can find everything we need right on the 11 rack itself. So we'll just hold edit back, hold it two or three seconds, and you'll probably land on page one up here. So we'll just scroll all the way down to where we were, MIDI CC reference. Press our SW1 to select it. 
And right here we can see MIDI CC numbers for green JRC distortion. Bypass is 25, drive is 27, tone is 78, level is 79. Now you might want to write these down so you're not having to you know, go back and forth. Uh, and we can use our scroll knob here and you can see every time I scroll, we're choosing a different item. So in this case, this is the uh, Black Op Distortion. We'll scroll all the way to the front. So MIDI CC numbers for bypass. Yeah, they all are right here. This is just the basics of distortion bypass is 25, mod bypass is 50, so on and so forth. And you can see here the season numbers for the amp and rig. So again, we can change more than just the effects. So cab bypass, the rig volume, tuner enable, we can do all of that uh, using MIDI in Pro Tools or in really whatever DAW really. So keep scrolling, you can see. Now we're getting into the exact amps for the, the Tweed Lux. Uh, they say the mic volume, for some reason you want the mic volume to go up while you're playing and up and down, you can automate that. So the Tweed Bass. A high boost you can see going all the way through so we can automate all of this stuff and there's so much in here and even though we're not going to cover all of this in this video yeah you know, the way i'm going to uh, perform these tasks for say like the wah or the distortion or whatever it's going to be exactly the same for any other parameter of any other effect you just need to add that number just as we did a minute ago you just need to add that number into your controllers and then you can automate it now if something like um like bypass that's basically just on and off you can't really have a slope for bypass once it gets to the certain number which I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's above 63 for this but you uh, you know that's covered in the pdf so you'll have to look at the pdf for that but uh, for something like bypass you know doing a slope doesn't make it much sense just it's just an on off message in that case where something like gain would of course you could slowly take that up or you could have it modulate back and forth from zero to full on same for the treble bass you can see there's our wah pedals so for all of our effects here, now if this is effect is as FX2, you can see the numbers are a little bit different. So keep in mind where you have things laid out, you know, on your 11 rack here. All right, that's for the CE1. So here's the multi-chorus, if it's in the mod section, so if it's here, there's all the numbers you need to know. As a mod, it's page two. If it's FX1, here's everything you need to know. All right, so this is where you can find everything, all of the CC numbers that you need for the Avid 11 rack. So let's go ahead and head back over to the computer and we'll set this up a little bit more, uh, take a look at it a little bit more. But once again, you can find that right here in the MIDI CC reference if you don't have your PDF or your manual handy. Okay, so here we are back at the computer. Let's go ahead and clear out the automation that we have here. Grab this and just delete it let me get rid of that i'll just fold this up for now all right so let's go back to automating the wah and again that's number four for the rest of this video we're just using the pdf just because it's easier okay so come here type in wah and we'll search there we go so bypass is 43 position is four cool so let's set this up one more time we've already seen it but let's do it one more time so you can use, you know, if, if you have notes or clips on here, you can you can leave it like this and get rid of it. You can just add an automation lane by clicking this little triangle drop down. So we'll do it, we'll do it like this. Why not? So let's we'll come down controllers. Now you should have number four automatically because it's a foot controller. It should already be there, but we could remove it if we uh, wanted to. There, just grab it and hit remove. Grab it and hit remove. So just in case you don't have it, and you come here to controllers again, that's what you want to choose the drop down and controllers. You could do that right up here as well. Drop down and controllers, but we'll do it from this line here. Come down to controllers and see four is still there. So we'll just use four because that's our position. And we'll come back to our pencil tool, click and hold. We want a triangle and we want this in quarter notes. Okay. And let's go ahead and draw in some automation. Actually, I don't want quarter notes. That's not, uh, that's a little too short. Let's do 16th notes. So we'll just draw this in here and let's make sure that it works. So again, this is our drag guitar. It's going to go through this track here when we monitor it. So let's hit play. Cool. Now let me actually draw this out even further. I'm just going to draw it way out. Okay. There we go. Right at the beginning. Now say we want to bypass the wah at bar 
four. Okay, we can do that. Let's add another automation line. Again, I could use more MIDI tracks, but why? When we can just add another lane. So just click this plus. There we go. Now we have another automation lane. Now bypass, if you remember, is 43. So let's add that. Just click this drop down. Controllers. Do we see 43? No. So add or remove controllers. Move this. We want 43. So here's controllers 1 through 31. Here's controllers 33 through 63. So we'll choose this one. And we want 43. Now disregard the name here. It doesn't matter. Again, we have MIDI track 1. There's a drop down here. We only have one MIDI track. Okay. So MIDI track 1. We have 43. Add it. Okay. So in this lane right here, let's go ahead and choose it now. 43. Right there. Now our wall is on. Let's just bypass this here. We don't need to hear it. Let's hit play. Nothing happens. All right, so I'll just use my hand tool here. I'm going to drag it all the way up top. And again, nothing's happening yet. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to bar four here. Let's click once that made a dot. I'll just pull it straight down. Now we're going to leave this automation in. So keep in mind this automation is going to keep going even after we turn it off, after we bypass it. So hit play. There it goes. Now wait when it gets up here to bar four. You'll see right here it's going to turn off. But the automation keeps going. Okay, and that is actually pretty useful because what if you want to turn the wall off here, but you want the same exact automation? Well, you could just draw all this automation out instead of having to, you know, try to find exactly, you know, where to draw more automation. Just, just you know, draw out, uh, you know, a longer piece. And then here I'll just make a click. Just click it once there and I'll drag this up. So we'll just start from right here and we'll monitor it. Why not? So now it's going to turn off and it's going to turn back on. So we'll see this. And I hit the wrong track. There's monitor here. Okay. There we go. See the automation is still going. It's going to turn it back on. Cool. And we could uh, click there and turn it off again. All right, so that pretty much explains it, but we're going to look at it a little bit more. Understand that concept of adding more lanes and just adding the correct controller number here and then drawing in your automation. Uh, you may not want to draw a crap load of automation all the way through your track. Uh, that can slow down Pro Tools if you have a lot of automation going on. So it might be a better idea to say, get rid of the stuff that you don't need. But you could draw, you know, you could draw it all out at once and then just delete the parts if, if it's easier that way, if it doesn't make sense, then of course you could always just, you know, draw your automation. You can actually make these lanes bigger, by the way, if you want to see it easier. You can draw on your automation to here and then just stop and then draw on your automation from here. Just stop. You can do that as well. I just want to make sure you're aware that, uh, you know, you're able to do that. And also I've covered this in a different video. I'll just grab our smart tool. We can, I have to pull it out here. You can see how our cursor turns into that angle bracket. Okay, I can just click anywhere and I can adjust this all relative to each other, you know, up or down, which is, which is nice. I pulled out the wrong part. There we go. I want to select all of it there. So you can do it. Uh, you can edit your automation like that. I'm not really covering automation in this video. I just want to show you how to do, how to do this here. So again, let's delete that and delete that. Actually, I don't know why we deleted it. We should have just should have just left it. So let's let's draw it again. It's not a big deal. We have our triangle tool, and this time we'll go to eighth notes. And this is CC number four. So that's our position. So let's draw this out again. We'll say about four bars, and then we want it to our wall to turn off right here, which actually we would want. We want this up here and this down so it turns off. Okay, and let's add another lane. Let's shrink these down a little bit. Pull that down. Let's add another lane. Again, just hit the plus. And this time, let's automate the distortion. So first we have to find what do we need for this green distortion. So we'll just type in green. And I'll be sure to click over here first to MIDI controllers. There we go. And right there. So bypass is 25, drive is 27, tone is 78, level is 79. Let's say we, we just want to do bypass and drive. So that's 25 and 27. 
Okay, we, we've already added our lane here. Controllers, add and remove controllers. Controllers 1 through 31, we want. 25 is what we want, and we actually already have it over here, but if we didn't have it, we would choose it, add it, and then we want 27. We'll add that one. Hit OK. And we'll come down here, and we'll choose 25 for this lane. Again, 25 is the bypass, and 27 is the drive. So this is bypass. So we'll start it out bypassed, which is going to be down here. Then I'll just click once and we'll turn it on here. And I'll click once and we'll turn it off again here. And then we'll click here and turn it back on. All right, now let's add another lane here. This time we want 27. Again, this was 25. Okay, so this one here is going to be 27. And 27 is the drive control. Okay, so this control right here, the overdrive, it's going to be going up and down. So for an up and down, we probably wouldn't want square. So triangle will work, but let's let's just use freehand. I'll even expand it out here. And let's just uh, start drawing in freehand here, up and down, up and down, all the way up. We'll keep it and then down and up, down and up, just going freehand. There we go. Now, we'll shrink these down a little bit just so we can see everything. So this is our wall data right here. Grab a different tool. Wall data on these two tracks and then our green JRC overdrive on these two tracks, all within one MIDI track. Again, you may want to use multiple MIDI tracks for this. You could have one MIDI track and just name it, you know, name it wall and have another MIDI track and name it uh, distortion. That would actually be a good idea uh, just to keep things tidy so you know what's going on. Okay, so now we'll hit play here. Again, we're monitoring our, our track here. So just watch what happens here. I hit play. So did you see how our overdrive came off, went on, and that overdrive knob kept moving? We'll turn that off. I hit play again. So this is controlling the wall. It's controlling the distortion at the same time. You can see there it went off, there it went on. Overdrive is still working, wall is still going. Pretty cool. And you can, like I said, you can go crazy with this. You can automate, you know, absolutely everything. Now, uh, let's, let's do actually what I said was a good idea. Control shift in, in my case, let's add another MIDI track create. Okay. Now this time, what do, what do you say we automate, say the reverb? So we have to know the number first, right? We can't do anything without knowing the number. So I'll just click over here first. We'll type in reverb. So here, reverb bypass is 36. You can see right here the numbers. So zero to 63 is off, 64 to 127 is on. Okay, so it doesn't have to be all the way up, all the way down. I just like to do that so it's it's much uh, you know more clear. So we'll just hit next. Here's reverb for the black panel spring. Here's what we want because we have the 11 SR stereo reverb. What do you say we adjust the bypass, which is 36, and the mix, which is 18, so 36, and 18 are the numbers we need to add if we don't already have them, which we don't. So let's go ahead and name this MIDI track Reverb. We can call it Reverb Auto so we know it's, it's for our automation, okay. So again, we want 36 for bypass, 18 for the mix. We'll come right here to our Reverb Automation track, choose our drop down here where it says Clips, go to Controllers, Add or Remove Controllers, and controllers one through 31, we want 18 for the mix. So we'll add that. And then we'll come down to 33 to 63. And we want 36 for the bypass. So 36, add that right there. Hit OK. Cool. So for this first track, we'll choose our drop down controllers and we want 36. So here's 36. That's our bypass. So let's go ahead and I'll just use my hand tool. Drag it all the way up to 127. And then we'll turn it off, say right here. And then we'll turn it on right there. Okay, so we'll hit our triangle drop down. Now we want controllers and 18 to control our mix knob over here. Our mix knob, we would probably want either freehand or triangle because we don't want on off messages. And that's kind of what square is going to be. We want a triangle. Let's do 
something slower, a quarter note. And we'll just draw that in the whole way here. Even though it's not going to be on right here, we'll just go ahead and draw it in. All right. Now, a very important step you don't want to forget is we need to make sure this MIDI track is sending to the 11 rack. So again, on the output here, predefined 11 rack has to be, has to be channel one, otherwise it's uh, not going to work. So we're not monitoring right now. I'll just hit play. You can see there's our mix knob. You can see it's off and it's going to come back on right there. Pretty cool. So now we'll monitor it. And keep in mind, our wah and distortion are still going as well. So we'll go ahead and hit play. All right, so that doesn't make much sense for reverb now, does it? So something for reverb, you'd probably want it to, say, escalate up. So we'll leave it on here. It's off here. Let's do a line. And we'll, say, grab it here. And we're just going to go trickle way out here. It's going to be way up on the mix over here. So now we'll hear that. It's very important to realize that even after our automation stopped, realize that we stayed at 100% up at number 10 here, all the way up to 10 because we don't have any more automation here. So if we wanted it to come back down, we'd slide it back down. You can see it will hold at that position. So I'll hit play. You'll see it come down. Pretty cool. And again, all of our automation for our wah and distortion is you know, it's still going on. All right, that is pretty cool. Now we could go on and on and on like this, uh, creating more and more, you know, uh, MIDI tracks, or maybe we want all the automation to be on one MIDI track. We could have all of this data contained within one MIDI track if we wanted, uh, you know, for our reverb, our uh, distortion, so on and so forth. Let me go ahead. That's pretty much all you need to know, by the way. You can stop watching now if you wish, but let's just go on a little bit more here. Get rid of that. That's... uh get rid of that we'll get rid of this and we'll just leave that on that's our distortion actually I'm gonna put this back in here for the distortion okay make sure that's right yep and adjust our reverb back down all right so maybe we want to adjust more things so here's the uh, chorus, our multi-chorus. Move this out of the way. We'll type in multi. Hit next. So here's uh, multiple effects control, by the way, pedal position 11. That's something we're not really going to get into, but you can come up here to our expansion pedal, put this on multiple effects, click this button right there. And we could configure a bunch of things within here as well. And you can see here's our uh, notes, uh, pedal position so you can see pedal position 11, uh, rig volume 17, so on and so forth there. So that's pretty cool uh, that you can do there. You have stuff for your effects loop. But what we wanted is the multi-chorus. So we'll just go through here and previous. So here's the multi-chorus. So as a mod, as FX1, as FX2, as you can see our, uh, let me turn this back to none and go back to our uh, multi-chorus. So it's, it's on FX2 right now. So the numbers we need are 86, 98, 114, 115, you know, so on and so forth there. So what we want to adjust, let's just say we want to leave it on, but we want to adjust the depth. So 115 is what we need for our chorus. 115 to adjust the depth. Now we could create another uh, MIDI track and call it chorus, or we could use this MIDI track here or this MIDI track here. It doesn't matter. Let's just use and uh, open up another lane in this MIDI track here. So what we wanted was 118, correct? Because we want the 
depth 115 because it's in, again, effect slot number two. If I did 60, it's not gonna work you know, for this. So it's 115, it's what we need. So we'll go ahead and drop down, controllers, add or remove controllers. Come down here to the bottom one, one uh, 102 to 119. We want 115, hit add there, hit okay. Drop down, controllers, 115, and let's use a line, and we'll have it come in a lot here, and then we'll have it come down, up, and then way down. All right, so let's just see this first without hearing it. Hit play. So you can see right there our depth control, and all of our other automation is still going on. That's pretty cool. All right, so now we'll hear it. Monitor the track. Now to really hear that, we really need to hear the mix too. So we can automate that as well. Mix is gonna be 97 because we're in FX2. So let's go ahead and add that. We'll just add another automation lane, controllers, add remove, and it was 96 or something, mix, 97, 97, 97. So we'll go to 97 right here, add that here, okay. And then we'll just choose it from our drop down. We wanted 97. And let's really mix this, that's the wrong lane really mix this all the way up. Okay, we're gonna mix it all the way up here and it's gonna just stay there. Okay, so now we'll hear this. Pretty cool. We could go on and on. Maybe we want to do the delay. Again, you don't have to watch this part. We're just, uh, you know, going through it. Why not? Delay. And so delay bypass. We know that. We want the dynamic delay right here. And let's just say we're going we're gonna to have it on. Go to the interface. And we're going to just control the mix of the delay. So... We want our mix, which is right here. Again, this is in the uh, delay slot. That's the only one we can use. We want 85. Okay, let's put this on our reverb lane just because I feel like it. Controllers, add remove. We want 85, so we'll select these controllers here. There's 85, we'll just add it. Okay, and then we'll choose it. 85, and this is our mix control for the delay. Now we want to start all the way down to say bar two or so, and then we'll just come all the way up pretty quick. And then we'll leave it, come down a little, come down a little, then come all the way down. All right, it's really just that easy. Let's put some, I think we got rid of our reverb automation. Let's just put some more in there just so, just so it's uh, doing stuff. Actually, let me change this here to uh, 16th notes. There we go. Now we'll see this. So as you can see, it doesn't make much sense to have on off messages for a bypass on our reverb, which is what we have here with all of this uh, triangle data. It does not make sense. Uh, really, unless you want it to go on and off, on and off, you'd probably want it to come on or then, you know, go off. So we'll get rid of it. Just delete it. And then we could use our line tool, come up here and then say off there. And Did you 
just see how it went off after it got past uh, 64 there. So it's going to be on through here. It'll come on as soon as I hit play. It's going to go off right up there. Pretty cool, right? So all of this stuff is still going on. Our wah, our distortion, delay, reverb, uh, chorus, all of this stuff. Now, admittedly, this doesn't sound great, but I'm just showing you, you know, how extreme you can really go. We could even, you know, adjust the parameters of our amp if we wanted to. Let's get rid of some of this crazy automation because it, it you know, it doesn't make any sense to have all of this. And actually, you know, before we do this, I want to uh, mention one more thing. No, this is actually going to be very important. Uh, we could, you know, we can fold these up, by the way, and all of our automation will still play. Okay, so I just wanted to mention that about creating multiple lanes, it may be smart because we have this mute button here. Now, mute, you often think of mute as muting audio, but mute also mutes data. All right, so let's check this out. Now, uh, the reason I want to show this and show I showed this, these uh, two, creating two different MIDI tracks is because you may want to mute some automation and not some other automation. And the easy way to do it is to use the mute button. So this track here, MIDI one has a ton of data controlling distortion. Wah, I believe our delay, right? I don't even remember what we have going here. We got so much. So again, we'll just hit play to get off mute. So everything's responding as you can see there. Now, if I just hit mute here, go back to the beginning, and I'll hit play, nothing's happening on this track. Now this track here is still responding. You can see our reverb. This is our reverb automation track. It's still responding. Okay. But everything, all the data within this MIDI one track is not responding. Again, I'll hit play. Wall's not doing anything. Now as soon as I unmute it, there it go. All that data is starting to be passed for the wall, distortion, and you know whatever else we happen to have on there. I don't even remember at this point. But that's why you may want to create multiple MIDI tracks because maybe you want to just mute the reverb automation and hear your track. That's an easy way to mute your automation just by using that mute button there. Okay. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of this crazy automation. Just, just remember that, that you can mute those things. We could actually delete the lane as well, but if you delete it, then it's gone and you'd have to uh, set it up again. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of this crazy automation here. We'll just get rid of this, all of this. Okay. And just so we can show one last thing here, we can also automate our amp. So this is the 92 tread mod. Come down here, MIDI controls, amp. And here we go, amplifier controllers. And we want the tread mod. So we'll just keep scrolling till we find it. We'll set up a new MIDI track for this here. Control shift in and a MIDI track create. This is going to be our amp automation. Okay. We can fold those down. You can fold them down by the way, that doesn't get rid of the automation. It just makes for a cleaner look. All right. Although we did delete that automation for the wall. So let's adjust say the presence, which is 14 and the base, which is 15. 14 and 15. So we'll come here, controllers, add or remove controllers. We want 14, and I'll control click that. So 14 and 15, add it. Okay. We'll just use our first track here as 14. Go ahead and create another lane here and make it 15. And we'll just use a triangle just so we can you know, see it respond. And we'll draw automation here. And then we'll change the resolution, something slower for here, which is 15, which again, 15 is the base. 14 is the presence. So this upper lane is presence. Bottom lane is the base. So we'll look at this. Go ahead and hit play. 
And as you see, nothing happened because what did I not do? I didn't send this data to the 11 rack. So drop down, 11 rack, channel one. Now if I hit play, you can see there it goes. Now if I chose 11 rack number two, play, nothing happens. All right, so make sure this is on channel one. And we can monitor it. So obviously that again doesn't make much sense to have it going that quickly but as you can see that is how you would do it you'd probably want say to ramp the treble up or the uh, presence up slowly and say we want the bass to start up high and then go lower we could do that turn those off Okay, so I believe that's pretty much everything you needed it to know and then some on how to automate the 11 rack, all of the effects, the amp, you could even do the cabinet. Again, your, this PDF here will be your friend. If you don't have it available, just head to the front of the 11 rack. Okay, you can find all those numbers that you need. It's very simple. Again, we can do this live with your guitar input set through guitar and you know monitoring your track here with 11 rig left, right. We're doing it in like sort of the mixing method, the way you would mix. Okay, which is actually probably the way you'll be doing it most uh, most of the time with it on reamp here and sending your dry guitar out the reamp. Again, we have a video covering reamping already and uh, other videos covering uh, automation, things like that. Okay, so again, the basic things you need to know are create your MIDI track. You may, again, you may want to create multiples because we learned about using mute to quickly mute that automation on that track. If we had multiple lanes on a track, it's going to mute all of that whenever we use this button anyway. Okay, there's a bunch of other tricks for automation which we're not gonna get into here. Also keep in mind you can control, you can uh, combine this with that method I showed in a previous video of using our program changes. Again, using program change to actually change the rig of the 11 rack. Okay, pretty cool. And it's really just as easy as coming down to controllers and adding the correct MIDI CC number that you need, add it, and after you add it, just come back to your track, controllers, and choose the correct number, and then draw in your automation with your pencil tool. Remember how to choose that over here, the resolution that you want. Uh, if you're using something like the, say, triangle, or square tool, or random, you know, you can always, of course, use freehand line as well. So you can do a ton of things with automation. Just remember to route your MIDI track out to your 11 rack channel one. Okay, I believe that covered everything. So now you should know exactly how to automate anything within the Avid 11 rack using your MIDI CC numbers using automation here in Pro Tools. Really cool, really easy to do once you know exactly what you're doing. Pretty cool. To triangle. Draw that in, see our wall. One last time, there it goes. Of course, we're not monitoring. It's not even turned on. So even if the wall's not on, it's still gonna respond to the automation. Turn it on, monitor. By the way, you could actually use a pedal board to draw in this automation if you wanted to, uh, or you know any other kind of uh, controller that you might have as long as it's sending on the correct uh, CC number, you could use something like that to draw on this automation if you don't want to use the pencil tool. But most of the time, you'll probably be using the pencil tool. Again, there's a lot more to learn about automation. We're not going to get into it here. I just wanted to cover pretty much everything you're going to need to know to automate your effects, amps, and everything else in the Avid 11 rack. Really cool. Okay, and lastly here, just so we're completely thorough, as I mentioned, you can actually use a uh, foot pedal to actually record that MIDI data into Pro Tools. Okay, that this can actually be very useful. I just, I just want to make sure I show it here as well. So we have a Behringer uh, FCB 1010 with the Eureka Prom inside. It's a great Prom. I have some really old videos that, you know, they're not the best quality, but this was like three, four, five years ago. What do you want from me, guys? <laughs> All right. So right now it's connected. You can see here 
uh, in our 11 rack on the uh, interface here. Uh, if I control the wall, it's not going to work. I'll turn it on. And there we go. You can see I'm controlling it. Pretty cool. Now we can actually record this data into a MIDI track in Pro Tools live while we're playing or even after the fact. So if you don't want to use that pencil tool, you know, as I mentioned, if you don't want to use a pencil tool, you could actually record this data in after the fact. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to record this in after the fact. Okay, using this track that we're sending out uh, via reamp and uh, through the 11 rack. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let me just, I'll just hit play here. Let me make sure that's off. Just hit play. Okay, so today we want to engage the wall somewhere around, you know, here and uh, start, you know, taking it up and down. Well, we can do that again with the pencil tool or we can record the MIDI data into our MIDI track. Again, it's, you know, it's pretty much the same. We already have our MIDI track. We've already selected the correct CC numbers, which, which we've already gone over. So there's four and here is 43, uh, you know, ones for the position, ones for on off. We have all selected here. Uh, just make sure you select the right one. If I chose, you know, something from my keyboard and then I go to move it, of course it's still going to work, but this track is going to be looking, I'll just hit record here. Let me take this off. This track is going to be looking for uh, data from my uh, keyboard. So as soon as it starts recording, you see nothing's happening there. Okay. So if I set this to all, it'll work. If I set it, set it to 11 rack, uh, channel one, I'll hit record here. Got a two bar count off. Okay, there it goes. And there we go, we can record it, but we'll just leave it on all because you'll probably leave it on all. All right, so I just wanna show you how to do this real quick here. So we have our track set up. So input, output actually isn't uh, important here because we're recording it in. So it still records, but if you want it to send out to the 11 rack, of course, it's going to need to send out because, again, I want to be thorough here. There's our automation. You can see the track. If I hit play, it's not sending it out anywhere. So make sure that you have this sent to where you want to send it. Of course, it's not on. If it was on. Okay, so let's let's do this for real now. There we go. We have everything set up. You know, I just left this on, on all. You could set to the 11 rack if you want. And it's, of course, sending out to the 11 rack. So in order to record that data, you probably already saw how to do it. Simply press the record button and you can record that data in. Now we're going to record turning the wall on and off. So that's off. That's on. As you see, as I push that button, we're going to record this data right into our MIDI track. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and hit record. We're going to have a two bar count off. Look down here for the automation to come on. So there we go. As you can see, we recorded the position data using the foot pedal and the on off data using the button. So you can do that with these other uh, devices as well. You could, uh, you know, control them coming on or off and record that data into Pro Tools so you can manipulate it, uh, you know, later on. Okay. So again, we could, uh, we didn't actually record any guitar in this. You could record this as well. We, we've just been monitoring. I just want to make sure you're clear that you can record the actual output onto a track as well. Uh, same thing, it's just you hit record, of course, so we don't need to record it because we have our data there, so we'll just hit record. And there's our two-part count off. And here we go. All right, that's all we need. So this track here is now that affected track, so if I put it on solo, even though, you know, the 11 rack is still going to be uh, responding, we're not actually sending anything anything out of it. So I hit play. Pretty cool. And that was on solo. So that is completely recorded. All right. I just want to make sure you realize you could actually record that stuff to an audio track that should be you know, pretty self explanatory. But, uh, you know, we've just been monitoring the whole time. But that is how you do it. You record your performance there. 
after you get everything laid out, you know, you've been monitoring it, just go back, hit record and uh, let Pro Tools pass through it. It will record all of that MIDI data going out to your 11 rack and then of course record that onto your new track. Okay, so that should be everything you need to know about recording your automation into Pro Tools, either using the pencil tool, you know, using any of these tools, of course, remembering you to adjust your resolution, remembering how to set up your tracks, you know, choosing your 11 rack for your output, finding all of the MIDI CC numbers that you need, how to come down to controllers, add, remove them, just add the ones that you need, then simply choose them in your dropdown, and then you can draw that in with your pencil, or you can do as we just did with our controller and use the controller. Okay, so that is a lot of information for you to absorb. Rewatch the video if you need to, and go out there and use this in a musical way. We didn't use it in a musical way here. I just wanted to show you how crazy you could actually get by automating so many things, you know, with this. It's, it's crazy what you can do once you know how to do it. But now you know the concepts. Again, we didn't go through everything, but the concepts you know apply to all of these different effects. Just find the right number, set up your MIDI track. Again, you may want to use multiple MIDI tracks. That's absolutely fine. You can label them, then you can easily mute that automation, okay? All right, so that is it on how to use automation with the Avid 11 Rack.